go in the bottom left. Raya, up right. Raina playing for Basilisk. The map is Crimson Court, which seems to be one that Zerg have been actually favoring a lot. Like, I see this getting picked usually by Zerg players. And um, what do you have? Like, you have a natural down here, and then you have like gold minerals, which open up kind of an island area. So there's rocks you have to destroy here, and you have one base. You have another set of big rocks for a ramp. You have another base. You have another set of rocks. And a third base. And then it's mineral walking again here. And the same is happening on the other side. You also have a rich Vespin geyser, which is a little bit exposed, but you can take this as a third. A forward third, for example. As Zerg. Or as any race, kind of. And uh, I think specifically in ZVT, this is a very exposed area, but in ZVP, maybe not as much. Yeah, let's wait and see what these players have installed. I think this is the first PVZ I'm actually watching on Pro Level on this map. So I'm really happy to see what Estrella specifically is going to bring here and how this is going to pan out. So far, this is going to be a gate on the low ground. I mean, I guess against Zerg, this is standard, right? I'm going to go with the standard approach, but of course, you can be open to a sneak attack from that area, for example. Zerg can always mine out on his side. Perhaps with some drones. Like you only need one drone really. You can make a geyser here and then mine this out. But you need two drones, I guess. Okay, of course this is PvZ, so we need to wait until the first three oracles have been basically kill three drones and a the creep tumors and the first two adepts are finished off by the first four links with three queens and um, then we will see what our three base setups are going to look like and what the actual game is going to be. I'm always happy to see something else than a stargate. Not going to be the case. I mean, this map kind of feels like it should be really good for Stargate because it has a lot of high low ground situations. And uh, air units, well, they just, they don't care to go over it. So it's going to be very, it, it is very fast to swoop from one position to another. Rotate. I don't hate it. I would even like to see Phoenixes, to be honest. It would be really good. Oh, it's just gonna be an adept here, poking a little bit at the queen. Let's see, hey, where are you placing your creep tumors? Can I uh, snag a drone? Are you actually making drones? Are you making roaches? This is a basically a needed scout. You see, like, with the shade he just did before this one, this one as well. I can constantly, hey, how many drones do you have? I think this was a mistake, actually, <laughs> letting that one finish. Should have not happened. He's gonna get a drone, though, lucky for him. But yeah, he's gonna lose the adept. Second adept coming in now, so this was definitely a mistake. A little bit late on the cancel. Okay, he's gonna get one more. Oh, no, missed target there. So these drones do stay alive. The adept gets up. A little bit unfortunate. The Protoss player making a funny mistake. Losing a unit, which is very key and powerful. And it's gonna greatly reduce his harassment potential. Also, his defense here at the third. Two adepts would have easily shut this down now. He needs to bring back the oracle. And he needs to keep it at home. As he does not have any other adept right now. Twilight is the follow up. Second gate is gonna be finishing here in a hot second, so we're gonna get a double warp in. Adepts. Ah, but he needs to turn on perfect time here by Reyna. He needs to turn on one more oracle. He's gonna get the, the links, but hey, these oracles are out of juice. They're not gonna do any drone damage. We see spores coming up. The base is gonna have one, second base is gonna have one, and the main actually as well, the latest one in the main. Trying to time this out perfectly. Look at the oracles here. Going up to four gates, that's kind of interesting. We see that overlord, I didn't know this. Oh wow. Oh boy, poor stalker. And now he's on the island. Oh no. Not gonna get it. He's not even gonna try. And we're gonna have enough energy soon to go for a sweep in if he wants to do. Maybe find some drones here. 
and Rutron is not going to be seen for now. Uh, scouting from the Oracles also has been very lacking, to say the least. Gonna see at least a Lair Morphin. Good for him. Maybe, like, honestly, at this point, it would have been better to save up the energy for Stasis Wards. With your 4 out gate blink push around. Gonna have Orchi as well. A little bit late, I guess, after the Twilight here. We're still missing a Robo, right? There we go, setting that off with one link from behind. Well done by Reyna. He also still has this group of links lurking here. I'm gonna decide not to fight because he would not be uh, in the. Well, he wants to fight with the screens, right? So he can have the most efficient trade he can get. Oh, there we go, Drop Lords. They're like super crazy fast now. Standard Overlord 2.63. Drop Overlord. Three. They're so fast, actually. They they look they look like they can actually do something. We can have a look at an oracle. It's five point six. Okay, that's very fast. <laughs> but a three, like the old one, overload. I think it was like two point six, right? That's a point four increase. That's pretty big. It's more than ten percent, like fifteen percent movement increase or something. He's dropping queens. Wow. Okay. Just gonna be a queen drop, huh? Oh, if he drops here. Might just drop into the stasis. Gonna see this, but oh my god! Those snipes! Those snipes! Two almost full overlords, six queens, and two overlords die in an instant here. Australia with the perfect counter move, and he should just have enough to fend off this army and defend the base. Oh my god! And he can even just blink down this push. Oh, oh everything's in shambles here for Reyna. That was the perfect move. Snap decision making here by Australia just snatching that overlord. And the second one just behind it. Only one queen did get dropped, and he, she is even going. She's walking back. Walk of shame. Reyna decides, like, ah, I maybe can still play on from this position. I still can make a game out of this, but honestly. Player uh, against a player from best caliber who already has his fourth finished, and you're just starting yours. And it is expa exposed, you are down tech, you are down units, you are down economy. Oh boy. So maybe he's just gonna go for another hurrah there with Banes. Like a Bane Roach or Bane Ravager attack. This is terrible. That's a terrible position. Oh my god, Reyna. I mean, kudos to him if he can actually make a comeback from this position. But as things are standing right now, Estrella, once he, like, seems Storm is his choice of AoE. Once he has Storm, some uh, charge lots, and um, some, some High Templars with energies ready, he should just push across the map and basically win the game. Uh, and we see Reyna is kind of getting uh, desperately saying, like, okay, if you come that far forward, I kind of need to take some trade here, do something, and uh, he's even, well, not really accomplishing that. Going for Hive now, really trying to go up economy and trying to go up tech as well. And we're gonna mine out this position, so this is gonna, this is a funny situation. So he's gonna open this area, which has been also opened by Australia. So both players are gonna go expand to the same island position, which is kind of funny. To see, and the other area is completely, um, yeah, discarded at this point. No one's going there right now, so it's a place no one can is playing. <laughs> it's like the playground with the with the slides that's so rusty. No one really wants to go there anymore, and everyone's going with the new ones on the right side. But it's so hard to imagine Australia losing from this position. He's already transitioned into air weapons, so we're gonna see a couple more targets, I think, and some um, a fleet bacon and some air stuff, right? Actually, transition into carriers. He does not want to let this. We're gonna have some charge lots denying this base here. While he's coming in at the front with his storms, and I think this is a, this is the key moment here. If Reyna can ha like hang on here, 
he maybe still has a chance to actually do a comeback and, and like bring it to really really late game but honestly I think this might just be the end of it because I don't think he has the army size to hold this he's making just roaches 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 but it's plus two already on these stalkers and the roaches don't have any upgrades it's plus one on melee so yeah you're not even making the stuff you have upgrades for so there we go gg well played by Australia. And yeah, that, that was insane snipes on those overlords. That was so sick. Perfect number of stalkers one-shotting those overlords. Only one queen out of seven got dropped off from these overlords. And then you don't have overlords in position, so you don't have creep. So the queen doesn't even do anything. It is like a mobile, immobile, quote-unquote, uh, air defensive weapon then. But it loses its ability to to push out creep to bolster your army movement as well right so and that was that was the perfect play and, and then it just finishes up the game there was no no way in hell that he let that one slip next map gonna be post you so crimson court was really cool really cool to see pvz i really love pvz on the map amazing actually the next one's gonna be post youth uh, map a lot of people really have been liking. A lot of players have been. And uh, so far, it has been producing really good games as well. It's a very interestingly shaped map. And in addition to its kind of out of the way shape, it has a very unique expansion setup with the in base, half gold, and uh, gold base on the low, like super low ground there, which is extremely exposed but it's in a very choky area so actually like uh, ranged units are very strong you have like colossi if you have storms aoe spells you have like siege tanks are super strong also defensively in that area it's actually not that easy to push and harass the uh, gold base on the low ground as you might think all right hopping into the game bottom left we have astraea up 1-0 against the man at the top right, it is Reyna. Okay, so quick look here on the map. As you can see, in base stuff. Most people probably know about this already. You get two rams, but this is mineral field blocked, which needs to be mined out. Four trips. You can do it with the geyser. Make a geyser here. Run over here, mine. Go into the geyser, trade for gas. Go here, mine. And like repeat four times. Reyna. Just gonna go for the gold immediately. Oh, I love it. So this is super, super cheesy. He's gonna um, make his natural out of gold, which is completely offensive. And uh, yeah, I, I like the decision. <laughs> Australia? Gonna go for a Nexus first. The gold. <laughs> let's go, man. Oh boy, let's go. Full NA. Okay, so yeah, I think. Um, this might be better for Reyna, because he has the Overlord, which is gonna scan this in a second. Then he can just throw down a pool, he's already making gas. He's throwing down a pool. He can just transfer some workers over here and basically base with speedlings. Because he can overwhelm with so many speedlings. Australia needs like double gates. I think one gate is not enough. You need to be making two gates here. This is gonna be seen though. Yeah, there we go, okay. There we go. Yeah, so I think, <clears throat> yeah, as you can see, already drones are going over here. I think this is a better spot for Reyna. But let's see if Freya can make magic happen here. He's going to actually do the double gate. I'm going to see. This is actually a full wall, which is very interesting. And remember, you could always mine out these minerals, so you don't really actually have to kill any of your buildings. This is such an interesting play. I love it. So cool. He's going to go for the gold, right? He cannot transfer, but he could recall probes if you... If he's actually going to do that. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be a recall. But... To actually evacuate the base, you need to mine out them. And I hope he's going to place a pile on here in the future, so he can make some buildings too. Okay, make a shield battery. You need to have a shield battery. There's the links already coming. As I was saying, he's flooding links. It's slow links at this point. But it's enough. Slow links are enough. You need a shield battery. Ray, my man. One zealot is not going to be your answer. Here we go. Things are coming in. Token shield battery starting now. It feels a little bit late though. Already more links on the way. 
and there's only one zealot so far. Crown abusing some adepts, but I think at this point, yeah, like even a third. Yeah, it might. This is gonna be good though. So he's gonna see this. Oh my god. Okay, so Estrella did. I think this is on purpose. <laughs> I think this is on purpose. It's not a full wall. My bad there. Seeing this now, I think this is on purpose. But honestly, I would have liked it to be a full wall off with the. Maybe he messed up the partner position. Like the cybernetics. Thing. There we go. <laughs> oh, I hope this adept can make it. Oh my god, it's gonna get healed from the low ground. A lovely stuff. This map is so interesting. Oh, he's gonna see the drones. He's gonna see the drones. Now he just needs to make like an adept and place it behind here. Yeah, there we go. Yep. It's gonna be placed behind and it's gonna shoot the drones. But it might not be enough. He did not notice. It's too late. He's gonna wall in the adept? Cheat battery? This is going full crazy mode. Oh my god. Okay, this is kinda cool. Okay, so he identifies that it's too late. And he's gonna try to block this area. Warp in the depths on the outside. Perfect. Here we go. One on the inside as well. Okay, this is an interesting position. I think this one might have been a little bit of a mistake adept. There we go. Sheet battery overcharge is gonna save the day. Oh my god. He only uses two props so far, but this base looks like it's so exposed right now. Oh man. Reina's just making links, so this is full all in. You have three gates as a sprayer right now. I like that you added the third gate. He has so many units at the this base, but he doesn't have a shield or battery over. He has two shield batteries. <laughs> this game is so crazy. It's like, let's go. Speed links against vanilla adept zealot and shield batteries. And we only make gateways and, and speed links and shield batteries. <laughs> and, and <laughs> this is such a crazy game already. But he's gonna use all of this depth here from the main base, gonna transfer down here and save this gold base. Oh, very beautiful play, but now he needs to clock up here. He has one adept in place. Very well done by him. There's nothing behind it. He needs to transfer over his army. He's exposing his gold. Link's coming in in the gold again. And Reyna is rotating beautifully, but it does not seem that he can really break Estrella at this point. Although this is looking really good here. For Australia, yeah, he's been stacking up in an amazing army. His economy has been growing. Reina. Well, I said it looked like it could have been the greatest thing for him to be happening. Actually, make think this base is amazing. like if you make a base, you make it here and get the extra three gold minerals. Even boost your income further. I don't like this entry. <clears throat> okay, so maybe what would have been even a little bit better than just making links is uh, add a baneling nest and just have a couple of slow banes with this, harassing this area. Probably gonna get you more value than just the links because since there were adepts at some point, like the links only was kind of running out at that, that point already. Ah, this is so Australia, oh my god. There we go. I think this is gonna be a GG moment. Oh my. And we're gonna lose Reyna here. To Australia in a 2-0. Most likely, oh my. Okay, so Reyna is like... Ooh. I hope he can stabilize, to be honest. Sake of everything. Sake of the series and sake of the tournament. Sake of... I just wanna see another game between, between these two. Because, because the games are actually kinda crazy. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna stabilize here. Okay, so he's gonna push out these adepts. Is he gonna identify the pylon? Ooh. Yep, there we go. Okay. Get that one and go. Get rid of this one. But is he gonna be able to stop this huge gateway army, which does not have any twilight upgrades or any forge upgrade? <laughs> it's such a crazy game, man. It's just vanilla. Vanilla gateway units against unupgraded road ravager. <laughs> with links <laughs> in the seven eight minute games <laughs> only upgrades we have a warp gate and speed this is full wings of liberty <laughs> oh i love it what a sick what a sick game and finally we have the first tech building robo from australia he's trying to make some shoot but we're gonna high ground not gonna happen they're gonna be cancelled Finally gonna do the same again. 
that this gold is very exposed, but it's also really tough to actually win a fight there. Oh, this could be the kill, though. The Achilles heal Reyna was looking for, at least the base trade possibility here. For our Zerg player, and uh, he needs to make something happen. This was definitely the moves reducing the probe count here. It's gonna kill the Nexus, I think, in the main base here at the second. Natural base is gonna fall. And yeah, this might just be enough that he can actually pull back now and regroup and just try to play defensively from this position. Because we are transitioning into a lair right now, we have the same amount of drones, which is okay-ish. We're still on gold here, and uh, we're making more drones here as um, Rainer. And we didn't really lose the army, we have similar army supply, a lot of it is in links. Not really good against so many adepts, but those adepts... There's no twilight upgrades. Honestly, I don't think you can... We play this without any toilet upgrades actually. That many gateway units. Like those adapts are basically like roaches right now. They're scaling really, really poorly. And the roaches? They're soon gonna have roach speed. There's still no twilight inside. The robo, did it get cancelled? I think it did. Yeah, there's no robo. It... Or did it get killed even? No. It... Yeah, he just has adapts. There's no glaives. Adept stalker, one century, no glaives. No blink. Like even having these stalkers, I don't think it. They are very, very good units. You need Twilight Man. I think, yeah, Robo, of course. AOE, of course. But you need, you need a freaking Twilight. You need it like yesterday, last year even. I mean, even even those that the dead shade. It's not that scary because there's no glaives. Oh, the Sentry is great here. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> this shoot battery is gonna get healed by this shoot battery on the low ground. <laughs> That's kind of a funny sight. Oh my god, there we go. AoE coming in first. Okay, and now, for the sake of God's love, throw it on the Twilight. Make it now. We have the money. Make it now. Make it now. Make it. We employ Warlord. He has the money. He's waiting to use the Colossus or Disruptor. I guess Disruptor is an option. It's gonna be against Roaches, but honestly, like, he's just getting speed for the Roaches he has, Roaches and Rangers. This is more a Ling Bane composition. It's gonna be plus one melee as well. Australia needs to identify this. He's thinking this is gonna be more and more Roaches. I think. That's why he made so many Stalkers. Now he's, he's going back into Adepts. Oh my god. Hey, some Adepts. He's gonna see those Banes, which is gonna be great for the man. But he's behind so far at this point. This. There we go. This is probably not the unit you're looking for. I think even a non great Colossus might have been better here. There's so many links. Disruptors are trash against links. Need to cancel that, my man. I mean, it's faster. It's, it's gonna be there in a second and it's gonna be good against the Roaches. And one Disruptor is gonna be okay. It's gonna be slow Banes for now, but... It's gonna be speed in five seconds and Disruptor is here. I, I like this for Reyna. Yeah. have to see an advantage that Australia has at this point, really. I wonder where the disruptor did go. Ah, oh, okay, it's here. In the gold. Yeah, Reyna can just, like, do full-on flank from every side, basically, and just roll in with Banes. He has so many Ding Bane, Ravager. And he has such a big economy, he can just keep trading at this point. He has so many bases. Gold did think run dry, but yeah, he's just gonna kill this bot. Just gonna reduce the squares on the was a big part of it, the gold base here. We do well played. Very well done by Reyna coming back in the game. It looked like Australia had it. But then he never made a twilight, he never transitioned back. I think that was where he was over defending a little bit too much. Six hundred. He was, he was like trying so hard to get any form of AoE that he definitely did not. I think that was a bit. That was the mistake. Right there. Getting those Twilight upgrades if you have so many gateway units. I think it's better than having one disruptor, don't you think? Like having glaives for like 25 adapts or having one disruptor. I'd rather have the glaives. 
Anytime. Oh yeah, I think that was a big mistake. Yeah. We made so many, so many gateway units. Never get any uh, any upgrades. Definitely. I think that would have been might have not been the win, but I think that would have been better than what he tried to. Yeah. Of course, if he buys like more time, right, and, and gets out three disruptors or five disruptors, hey, then we're looking at a different game. But honestly, still, like, if I think about it, I would still rather have uh, waves or blink than even three disruptors. Disruptors are so hit or miss. You don't hit the money one in the middle of the army, then you are out of options. Like if you have blink, not, um, it's it's a lot weaker, like a one punch way of thinking, but you have way more room to do anything, like potential basically. To work for you. Bracken actually went stand well going in the lobby. Max Pax is gonna okay, so he did win over Bian and face Nightmare or Clem. Well Bina is playing a player and Dark did win over Trigger 2 to 1. Who does the trigger taking a matter of map out of Dark there? Done by him. Yeah. I'm gonna see if it's gonna be Rainer or Dark. Okay, so let's head into Ghost River, then map from the new map pool. I think the pros also are a little bit fed up by the old map pool, because it has been so stale. Top right, it is Reyna, top left, it is Australia, and yeah, we had super crazy games with these <laughs> players. And I've seen some crazy stuff on this map, specifically from Australia already, and uh, yeah, in, in different, um, in the PvP, but... I've seen it. I think it was Australia against Hero a couple of weeks ago. It was insane. They they played like I think a week ago actually. Yeah, it's on the Artosis cast. So Artosis cast too. Just go go over there. Look for Australia against Hero. It's it's a banger of a series, and it has this map. And this map was basically the coolest map, or the, the one of the coolest PVPs I've ever seen played. Period. It was just super super crazy, super weird, super amazing. So many of the moment decisions <laughs> and it was it was just it's just lovely stuff okay but let's get done down to this one looking at a pvz on this map and i don't think i've seen a pvz on this map yet i'll be honest oh and this is definitely not as crazy as the last map by far um, and honestly, these close by air position maps, I like Protoss most of the times in any matchup. Just because you have warpins and it feels that those those reinforcements, once you have set up positions around the map, they can be so valuable. Because it's very hard to reinforce as well. So imagine you're a Zerg like, right? You're growing here into the, your natural position, you're growing to the third. That's, that's okay. So you have creep there, right? It's okay. And you grow into your fourth. You're going from your main to your fourth. This is the path you have to take from your main to your fourth. Okay? So usually, fair enough, you're not in your main, right? With your army. And this is a very compact setup, so it's kind of hard to get in any air units or even a war prison. 
So you have like your army around this. So you have your third defender, and you can like rather do and push out to your fourth. But then, fifth base. So this is like a low. This map really provides a low, promotes a low base setup. Aggressional play style, and specifically if you have Protoss in the match with Warpins, like if he has a pylon in this area, or if the Protoss also has this base, for example, he can like do run by so much easier than the Zerg player, which sounds crazy, right? Yeah, it can be the case. All right, and they're poking in. See if he can see anything with a shade here. And hey, you have three links, you have a full set of drones here, so I expect no all in. At least no Ling or Bane Ling bust. And no Ravager bust. Speed is done. Oh, you should. You should Evacuate, think you do. Oh no. Bye bye. Oracle though. Yeah, okay. I don't think calling the Oracle back against three is needed, but of course he doesn't know if there's actually more coming behind this right now. As he lost the Adept and lost the Scouting there. Turned on the Oracle, better safe than sorry. Rare things. Position and it's gonna get the Safe reduction there on those links. Gonna also reduce any future counter attacks here on the building nexus. Twilight on the way, and we do not have a forge. A little bit interesting. There's gonna be two oracles, so no third in production for now. Been kind of his theme so far. Wins um, the the other game, he did go into oracles. I think he also stopped at two. And no forge or very late forges so far. I'm gonna see blink here. So this is a kind of a fast blink play with four gates. It's two more gates coming up. Yeah, this is a four gate blink, rather fast blink one. <coughs> and we're gonna see what he can accomplish with this one. And if he's gonna decide to make anything forward, he could use like uh, we've seen that's for example or hero who have been doing these pushes with forward shield batteries like a couple of shield batteries and a one gateway and um, as a fast warping point and then eventually doing this with like six gates gonna be a forge for now this is a little bit late on the forge it seems but well how Australia wants this to be a bit more early pressure but a little bit later on the power spike Is he already plus one melee here on the way for Reyna and I hope he well it seems like he has identified the threat and gonna make some links now. Not be too much. Well he's not gonna commit too too early here. Still his blink, I don't think he's gonna go in really. That's an overlord, that'd be great. There's already enough link. Back. Another 20 on the way. And Australia decides let's go for an expand. Reyna is safe. Cannot find any damage. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna find a couple of drones, which is nice. Uh, one forced morph here. So if you are a new Protoss player and you're trying to, you're having like issues once you set up a ne new Nexus and. Uh, Oh, oh, this is actually gonna hit. Yeah, two queens and two drones is nice. So if you are having trouble setting up Nexi, um, really with like reinforcements, you need two pylons at least. If you have one pylon, it's too volatile. As you can see, those pro players, they always set two pylons on the outer Nexus. I will have you. So if one gets sniped, you still have one more for extra power on your batteries or enforcement points or weapons. Specifically in PvZ, it can be super explosive. The stim bio can just down a pylon in seconds, and then you're like, you cannot warp in anymore. 
seen this mistake even being done to uh, or made by players up to master level, so it's a rather frequent mistake and easy to fix one. Arch now here with Storm and plus two attack. He's been chronobusing this actually very well. I like. He's been really catching up in the upgrade department there. Plus two. It's kind of about the same pace almost. If he gets one more chrono down, I think it's gonna catch up right away. Yeah, Storm is gonna be fine here against those links. Reyna is just gonna go for a late game, it seems here. Just gonna do, do some more expansions, gonna get his Lurker Den. He's gonna go into a Hive. He has the Infestation Pit, he's gonna go with Hydra upgrades. And uh, this, there's gonna be a lot of gas being mined here in a second. I wanna see another Evo Chamber to be... Oh, uh, it's already done. Sorry, sorry, sorry for the sound here. Sorry, I missed the Evo Chamber. There we go, of course, for the range upgrades. Reyna already ahead of me. As he should be. Getting spines, a lot of static defense. Okay, I don't, I don't hate it. I think on this map specifically, with the how far apart the bases are, I think this is a good choice. It's gonna buy you enough time to basically reinforce your positions. Oh yeah, get that adapt down there. But it's not gonna be en enough, right? I cannot range all of those. <laughs> I don't think. Or gets going in for a scout. It's gonna see. Hey, there's a ton of static D, huh? And I hope he's gonna make the same around these bases here. Pinch bases. And then it's gonna be about about these two bases in the bottom. If Raya can actually wow take those, or if um, Reyna can keep on denying them. <gasps> drop lords, tons of drop lords. Where where are they? A little bit all over the place. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're really all over the place. That's weird. I wonder if he just selected all of his overlords or if he has is something. Something planned for different positions. Oh, seems like he just randomly selected some overlords. Maybe he wanted to disguise in case it gets scouted, you know? Like, oh, I have only two drop overlords. Or, like, only one. And now it's actually five. And they're ready drop links but it is fighting time first zealots running into lurkers not gonna be the fight Stray is looking for but also all the queens are walking into archons and templars that's also not the fight you're looking for it's Rainer. oh those poor guys they're not gonna not gonna get aboard please let us in okay that you balloon guys you guys go ahead we're gonna come back okay so drops are stronger now they are faster this has not been seen this is coming in quick. Central uh, Bane speed about to be done here. Stray is going to find this lucky break for him. He should just instantly warp in stalkers or anything or whatever. Templars, Archons, get what you want. He's going to lose another group of zealots down here in the south. And the fights have not been going for him so far. Ah, Reina perfectly identifying. Hey, I can't find any damage here. I need to rotate this drop. Keep on pushing in the south. No, nope. gonna pull back here. Just gonna confirm there's no extra base for you. And it's just gonna drop, drop here in front of the natural. But yeah, he should not find too much damage. Be beautiful storm gonna come down. Carrier has arrived. One more stargate on production. Turn into three stargates. We have uh, actually a carrier queued up here. That's a lot of money. You should fix that one. Immediately get it into this stargate. A lot of money, a lot of supply, and a lot of... Uh, of the supply doesn't, doesn't... Not there yet. Doesn't count yet into the supply camp. That's basically... A lot of build time as well you're wasting there. Okay, he's busy now though. He needs to defend his base first. He's got a couple more carriers coming in. There's only five, five to seven Hydras. So this should be an easy clean with air units if he likes to go for it. This is a ton of lockers though, so everything coming from the ground is gonna get completely destroyed, but a huge flank is gonna dislodge those lurkers here. Yeah. Very well done by Australia, another beautiful storm coming down, killing a ton of links, and this is the Bane run by Rainer was setting up for. <laughs> this was grossly oversaturated. 31 31 probes, oh my god. So he was already preparing for a new base there, and basically having a ton of oversaturated probes here. 
And that was basically uh, like a third of your car. I mean, like, oh my god. 31 drill. Oops. Workers, whatever. Well done by Reyna here. Kind of pulling Astray a little bit apart and striking at the perfect time. Trying to even get a deny on this Nexus. Oh, there we go. And yeah. Astray is struggling. He's struggling to find any. Um, any, any more room to grow. And. Uh, oh. Reyna is not giving him the opportunity, he's not giving him the time or the tempo play is perfect here in Reyna so far. And just keep keeps and keeps and keeps and pushing in with very mobile forces here. Dark are mobile, yeah yeah, you laugh at me, but I mean he's using them very as a mobile force, right? Rotating so much with those units. There we go, another big attack here on the fourth base and the, the, no, does not seem that Australia has the time to stabilize here. That being said, though, we are at six areas. But the time to go is now. Time is of the essence. We have nine corruptors. We have two vipers on the way. We have no upgrades on air. So it is, it is literally now or never. Australia, you need to just go across the map. You have the bigger and better army by far. But it's not going to last very long. Once those plus one come in, once those castles are juiced up on energy, and once those uh, corruptors and spores are finishing up, it's gonna be tough. And now you need to travel across the world, basically. He's completely running out of bases. He need, he's so all in. He shouldn't have wasted time on, on fighting the army, cleaning up that army. He's actually trying to re -inspire. Okay. Trying to play this defensively. But, oh, Mothership. Okay, Mothership! This might be the move. I didn't see it on the production tab, but yeah, it is actually... It could be the move. Oh, this is also a good move from Reyna, though. He's gonna kill so many probes. Zealot's trying to clean this up, but this is gonna be enough. And uh, we have a big force pushing finally into Reyna's area here, but there's already so much static defense, buying so much time. And uh, this mothership is gonna recall now everything into the natural here, but Reyna did not fall for it. He has his units kind of a position. As you can see, the air force is here, but. The static defense is not there, and the tech is here. Ooh, grabbing the mothership. Oh my god, he's gonna freaking explode it. There we go. He's gonna lose both vipers, though. Very well done here by Estrella, and those were the only two vipers, if I saw this correctly. And now he can just completely destroy the tech here. He can kill the spire, boom, no more upgrades, no more corruptors. He can kill the hive as well. He killed the spawning pool. Okay, this. As I said, this might be the push. If he can win it with this push, make one more mothership, honestly. Like, warp something in here, make one more mothership defensively. You can also do a recall. And, like, play defensively now if he wants to. Oh, it's a beautiful storm. There's so much damage. It's a beautiful storm. He's kind of running really, really out of money, though. So he's going to be below on, on the visit. Eventually. As you can see, he's at zero. He doesn't have the money to rebuild him. He only needs to win once at this point. I mean, Reyna is mining, but he's making a spawning pool. That's how far behind his tech is right now. Oh, and if he can just run through this, kill all the lurkers, the ground the ground army is not going to get broken. 33 links and two lurkers. There we go, Estrella takes the game. Oh my god, the attack was perfectly executed. Very well done by Stray, and he's gonna <laughs> knock out Reyna out of this bracket. That's an insane result. Very well done by American Protoss player.